you know, uh, for me, there's really interesting convergence among all the talks. We started out recognizing that we wanted input about soils and crops and forests and interactions. But I think in each of the talks, what we really saw was a small number of very clear, uh, very shared themes. Uh, one is the need for a systems perspective and the recognition that this is a problem where if you uh, push in one place, you're likely to see an unexpected process or interaction pop up in another place. And that unless you have a starting focus that recognizes the richness and the diversity of interactions, you're likely to miss things and you're likely to have unintended consequences that could be negative ones. There's also a, a really pressing need for better information, better information about processes that at every scale, uh, better information about the, the photosynthesis, the crop yield, the microbial interactions, all the way up to the social dynamics and the, the um, economic consequences. And, and I, one of the things that was most impressive to me is the way that everybody talked about um, surprising factors that had the potential to be important levers on on how much we can actually realize from natural climate solutions, whether that's the uh, role of agricultural intensification in terms of freeing land for forests, uh, whether it's about the opportunity to take advantage of new kinds of forest-based products to uh, do a better job of, of substituting for carbon intensive products like carbon and steel, or whether it's to recognize that in an environment where uh, government subsidies are really important, there are also important risks associated with things like um, a universal carbon price. I also thought a really important theme that came out through all the talks was the, the relevance of being sophisticated about what we can get from the private sector. And in many cases, I think what we're really trying to figure out is how to navigate an environment in which there's clearly a role for governments, a clearly a role for uh, big actors in the private sector, and there's clearly a role for individual forest owners and individual farmers. Uh, you know, uh, there's no question that we're, we're short of information. We're short of information at every scale. We're seeing some impressive opportunities come forward with uh, new technologies and, and new approaches to gathering data, uh, but it's also clear that one of the keys to success is going to be being uh, humble and thoughtful about recognizing the full set of interactions that are, <clears throat> that are almost always important in, in uh, settings that involve uh, real people making real decisions that that impact uh, you know their ability to provide for their families. The the take home messages from from today's presentations are uh, you know summarized here, and I I, I think they provide a, a really sound basis for the for the workshop and uh, and a really good foundation for moving forward. I'll just I'll read a couple of the key points. Soils hold large quantities of carbon, and there are important opportunities for increasing soil carbon sequestration. Co-benefits super important across this space and every other. Uh, with with forests, we really need to think about forests as a system, recognizing that there may even be um, unexpected places where the where the uh, opportunities for carbon storage are, are likely to emerge. Uh, throughout, uh, we really need to do a better job of measuring and monitoring, not only to have a clear sense of what works where, but also to build a system where um, participants in any kind of a trading system would have confidence in the quality, reliability, and permanence of whatever investments they're making. And it's also really important that we avoid unrealistic or naive assumptions, especially assumptions that are based on small scale trials in particular locations that are 
well set up for uh, producing particular kinds of benefits and that those benefits may not occur once the same kind of solutions are deployed at, at other scales. And of course, the uh, theme that, that penetrates through all of the presentations is that we need to be uh, wary of ex feedbacks that can occur uh, through the social and economic and policy systems, and especially in a context where subsidies are so important for the public state in forests and, and in, in farm economies, we need to be sure that we're paying attention to the implications of the, of the um, kind of social and, and policy feedbacks that are likely to occur. At least for me, this sets an, uh, an incredibly uh, intriguing and an optimism inspiring, but also a challenging pathway. And I hope that all of you can join tomorrow when we'll come back and explore more of the aspects of how we, we build on these kinds of insights to really think about a system that produces concrete benefits for people and the climate. Sarah, let me turn it over to you to uh, give the marching orders for tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for uh, moderating a great panel today. Thanks to all the speakers and panelists. I would also like to thank Jennifer Milne from Stanford's Precord Institute for Energy for um, uh, managing the Q&A portion of the meeting today and yesterday. Um, so again, yep, tomorrow we will, um, the theme is carbon management and mitigation strategies, and we'll be convening again at eight o'clock in the morning Pacific time. So have a great uh, afternoon and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>